Uh, so the um, as because I had no pre idea as to exactly what I wanted the scene to look like, and so I don't really know myself until the render is finished exactly what it's going to be, what, what the finished product's going to look like. Which is why I love 3D as well, and why I love uh, creating these environments, because you just never know what you're going to get. Uh, the moss on these rocks is a good example of letting view handle the ecosystem population automatically. The same with the grass on the hills, that was all done by view. I didn't place those by hand. And, and that's a good example of when you would use views automatic population as opposed to doing it by hand. But yeah, as far as the actual image goes, like I said, I, I never really know what the final result is going to look like until it's finished. That's why I love doing artwork and why I love doing 3D because you just never know. <laughs> it's even a surprise to me at the end. I mean, sure, you can get a general idea as you're laying the scene out like we are, but um, like I said, the final image, you just don't know what it's going to look like until it's finished. Not really. Uh, again though, like I said guys, this the, the moss and the grass on the hills, that's a great example of when you would use Views Automatic Ecosystem Population. Uh, the flowers that we've got on the sides of the hill and the trees that we've got around the actual, the bushes around the, um, the garden terrace is a good example of when you would uh, place things by hand and why you would place them by hand. Again, I want to point out and make sure that you guys work in layers. So don't set up your scenes where you've got your object here, you've got another one beside it, another one beside it. You know, work, don't work that way. Work here, here, here. So you've got different layers in your scene to add depth and interest. If you just put things on the one flat plane type thing, just lay them out in a row and do your render, it's not going to look good. Try and layer them up a bit. To add visual interest in the image and to make a prettier picture, which is, you know, the whole reason you're doing it. And, and adding these layers will help to add depth to the, to the actual image. But always, again, remember when you're doing this to 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 um to make sure you're balancing out your image. Don't have too much going on on one side and not enough on the other. That's a good example of this layering is um, why I placed one of the terrains further back and one closer to the camera. That's what I mean by layering. So we've got this one close to the camera, this one further back from the camera. So that's our first layer. That's our second layer. The um, flowers on the hills here are our third layer. The garden terrace itself here is our fourth layer. And then our bushes in behind the garden terrace are our fifth layer. And I'm probably going to add one more layer right at the very front here once um, we've got our trees in. So we're going to end up with uh, at least probably six layers here. And then the background image itself will be uh, another layer on its own. So. so probably seven layers by the time we're done. At the moment we've got, like I said, about five. So we're adding another two more layers. We're going to be adding uh, probably... I'll add something in the foreground here and then the uh, image in the background will be uh, another layer. So. So always work in layers and always make sure that you um, are balancing up the image. Not too much going on on one side and not enough on the other. It just makes for a more interesting looking picture and the human eye will tell if something is unbalanced it just doesn't look quite right. You'll notice the photographers when they take photographs they try and get balance in their um, composition as well. And that's just because it, it it makes for a nice uh, uh, picture for the for a person that's looking at it.
you'll notice though that now that we're adding more and more um, objects to our scene, the slower the renders are getting, uh, st starting to become. Uh, again, this is why I tend not to um, throw everything into a scene at once, but gradually build it up over time because it is going to start slowing down the render more and more, the more things you have in the scene. So work, work from the background to the foreground gradually uh, and try not to throw more objects in a scene than you need at, when you need them to speed up your render as much as possible. Um, I may reduce the size of the moss a little bit more I think. I just think it might be a little bit too big. Again, I'll wait till it's finished its um, pre-render here. It doesn't need much, it just needs like maybe um, 0.05 reduction in size. Yeah, I'm going to, um, I, have a, I just feel that the moss is looking a bit too large. So I'm going to jump into our uh, ecosystem for our rock here, not that one. Go to our general tab and instead of 0 0.2, I'm going to knock that back to uh, 0. Point one tour. Remember to repopulate after you do that though. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the rock on the other side. Remember to repopulate. I may increase my um variable density a little bit too. Now you can do it here like I have, or you can actually go in and edit the function. Um, and it will be this one here. Here you can change the largest feature and smallest feature. Uh, if you look in the at the um, fractal here in the, in the viewport. If I pull up the largest feature, or pull it down, it, it changes the fractal and that will change the distribution of the moss on the rock. Pull back the roughness, pull, actually I'll pull it up a little bit more. Let's try that. Uh, let me just repopulate. Even after you change your um, variable density, always remember to repopulate. And again, you see how that's changed the moss here on the rock. It's made it, um, moved it more towards the front of the uh, rock and around the side. Before it was sort of spread out over the rock a bit more. I wanted it bunched up a little bit more. And I achieved that by changing the fractal pattern to make it a little bit darker. So we have our foreground mounds, we've changed up our, um, our moss a little bit, made it a little bit smaller. Because like I said, I have I felt that, um, oh, I hit the render button, didn't mean to, doesn't matter. I felt that the uh, moss was just looking a little bit too large. For moss, because remember it's not actually, the plant that we're using is not a moss plant, it was actually like a small, a small actual plant. We've just reduced the size so much and I found it's a really good plant to use to simulate moss by making it very small. Uh, even better than, like I, I actually purchased um, from Cornucopia some moss plants that other people have made and this plant is better and it comes with you, it's a default plant than, than the actual ones that I purchased. So. 
My advice to you guys is if you want to put moss on tree trunks or on rocks like I am, use that default plant, just make it very small. Because it uh, produces a really nice looking moss. Nicer than anything you can purchase in my opinion. Consoles, thank you very much for the uh, for following my Twitch channel. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate it every time you guys follow me on Twitch. So thank you. What? Again, guys, remember if um, you have any questions, please feel free to pop into chat. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have if I can. If you just want to watch, that's completely fine. I know when I'm watching people on Twitch, I don't always want to talk to talk to the guy that's streaming. So I completely understand that. So we've got our rocks in, we've got our mounds in for our trees, we've scattered our leaves along the path and up the uh, stairs of the garden terrace. Um, we've got our flowers on the two sides of the hill. I think the next thing we're going to tackle is um, bringing in those two hero trees for the foreground that we're going to be sitting on top of these mounds on either side and to do that i'm going to be loading up a speed tree and exporting a tree from there that i've actually shaped to the way i want it Again, for you people watching that uh, may not be aware that the render you're seeing here is a preview quality render. It's very uh, low quality. We use these low quality renders while we're setting up our scene because it's uh, the fastest way to get an idea of what it's going to look like. I don't ever go to a final quality render until I've finished setting everything up. And a final quality render will uh, improve the image quite dramatically. And again, even once we've done our final broadcast quality render, we're going to be taking that into Photoshop to do color correction on because it's very rare that you will that any design studio will use a, a render raw they always tend to do color correction because uh, they want to make the image look as nice as they possibly can again it's probably not something unless you're in work unless you've worked in design or for a studio a lot of people probably aren't aware of that they think that what they see in their render is exactly the way it came out in the studio when they did their render and it's not they always, always, always do color correction. And we're going to be doing the same thing. I'll show you guys how I do it and how it's done. How I do it anyway. Again, the way I show you my workflow here is the way that I do it and the way that's worked for me over the years. Different people will have different workflows. There is no one right or wrong way. I just show you my way. Now, Sniper Echo says, is there anything specific you need to do when exporting from Speed Tree to View? No. There's not. Again, that's why I love speed tree. Um, now, Eon View do make a uh, tree editor called Plant Factory, I think it is. I don't use that. Uh, it's not, not that there's anything wrong with it, but um, I prefer speed tree. I like the interface of speed tree. But if you're um, if you are exporting from speed tree an animated plant, because speed tree has you can animate your plants in speed tree. Uh, then you have to make sure that some settings are, are turned on before you do an export to bring it into view. Uh, I won't be animating this scene, so no, basically it's a straight export. I'll show you guys. I'm going to do an export once this render's finished. But no, there's really nothing special you need to do. You just need to export the actual tree itself. Because like I said, we're not animating the tree. Uh, now, I know animated trees if you wanted to animate a tree and use view you want to take an animated tree from speed tree and use it in eon view you can only do that with the with um either the ple the personal learning edition you download for free and try or their extreme or infinite version of the software they're the only ones i think that i think actually even extreme is the only one that can import an animated fbx even infinite which is their second tier of product can't do it you need to buy their top of the line product to to import an animated fbx tree now 
if you're a 3D Studio Max user, I created a plugin, I wrote a plugin in Max that can take your animated speed trees, convert them into a format that you can use in Eon View, regardless of what version of the software you're using. So if you're using the latest version, top of the line part of this, like if you're using the PLE, it's the top of the line version that you see here. You can import an FBX. Um, if you're not using that, say you're using the artist version of the software, you can't, or, or, or even the infinite version of the software, you can't bring in animated FBX objects. That's Eon Software's way of making you guys, making people buy the most expensive version of the software. Uh, so I created a plugin for 3D Studio Max that will allow you to convert your animated trees in SpeedTree and bring them into any version of Eon View. So you don't have to buy the top of the line version of their software. Now we could do it in this version and you could do it in the PLE version you download because that is their top of the line version that they allow you to test out. But for any of you guys that don't want to um, spend $1,500 on their top of the line version of their software and want to buy their artist version, which uh, um, is about 400 I think, I can't remember exactly, but it's, it's substantially cheaper, but you can't bring in your animated class. I created this plugin, but it's only for Mac, 3D Studio Mac. And that was the reason I did it. I had a lot of guys, um, because I sell my models on Cornucopia, say, asking me if, how I got uh, animated, uh, how I could get an animated tree into into the artist version of the software. And there really is no way without um, without buying the most expensive version that they sell. And I thought that was ridiculous, so I made uh, a Max plugin that people could use and download for free and you can get it from my blog just for any guys watching that do use 3d studio max and want the plugin if you go to my website phildoes3d.com and go to my blog which is blog.sign.com if you look down the side here there is a speed tree to view plugin this plugin here you can download That's what the dialogue will look like when you do a conversion. I even created a, uh, a tutorial for you guys if you want to watch it to show you how to use it. So please feel free to download it and use it. That's why I created it. I made it so you guys uh, had an easy way to convert your animated trees. So have that. Again, though, that's only for 3D Studio Max. And it, the plugin will work in any version of Max pretty much. It doesn't have to be the latest version, it works in all versions, it should anyway. I know I've used it in version Max 2013, 2014, 2015, I haven't installed it in 2016 or 17, but it should work there as well. Uh, now I still, I, st <laughs> I still don't like the, um, the size of the moss here. I still want to make it a bit smaller. I'll do, I'll make, I won't do another render on it, but I will just reduce the size um, and then we'll jump into speed tree. So I'm going to go back to my, um, my general tab here and I'm going to change it from 0 0.14 to 0 0.9. Populate it again. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rock on the other side. And again, the size is really going to be dependent on the object you're applying it to. That's why you're going to have to do a couple of test renders and check it yourself on whatever it is you're putting the uh, moss on. So that, that looks a bit wrong. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, what's happened here, Smurf Berry? Good to see you, Smurf Berry. <laughs> uh, just be careful of Nightbot, Smurf Berry. You, you know it's really uh, strict. <laughs> My apologies for Nightbot being such a, a strict little thing. Uh, 0.09, I made it way too big. I forgot I was working at 0 0.14. That's the one we want. So yeah, my apologies, Smurf Berry, for um, Nightbot doing that. <laughs> I'll have to look at Nightbot. Nightbot can be 
it spams my own links as well. Like my YouTube link and my Twitter link, all of a sudden it will decide that it wants to throw in every link that I've put in my commands list. I'm sure it's got a mind of its own, that program. Uh, Snowberry Barbecue says one day uh, I'll start streaming and then put Nightbot in shackles. <laughs> my apologies, Snowberry. I will look at Nightbot. Um, I'll look at it and find out why it's being so so strict with symbols. It, it may, um, yeah, I, I will, I'll look at the program. My apologies for doing that to you and for anyone else that Nightbot has been a bit rude to because I know that um, it, can, it can be a bit rude sometimes when it starts timing people out. It, it can say some really rude things that I, I consider rude. You know, no respect at all. It's really, it can be really rude. Uh, so I'll look at it. I, I hope I fixed my Be Right Back music so I'll look at Nightbot next. Um, that should be better. We've made our, our IB why am I calling it? Our moss much, much smaller. And we've just got it on a couple of the rocks here. Um, let's jump into Speed Tree really quickly. Because I want to um, pull up those trees that I've shaped that I want to pull in as the hero trees in the foreground of our image. Okay, Garden Terrace left. All right, so basically what I've done is I've shaped this tree exactly the way I want it. And this is the tree that's going to be sitting on the left-hand side of the um, garden terrace. So I know it, we're only going to really see a small section of the tree. It's probably going to only show up like in our render, probably like that in the square image anyway. When we do a, a larger image, we'll see more of the tree. Uh, but again, I shaped it to the way that I wanted it. I, 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 change the roots slightly because I wanted them to stick out of the ground a bit more. Uh, it's a nice tree, it, it nicely detailed so it'll show up well on the renders and remember because we're using these as our hero tree which is any high resolution object close to the camera, they generally call that a hero object. Um, because it's a nice high resolution tree it will look good as our hero tree in our scene. So now remember with um, with speed tree, it does have parameters for um, wind and all that type of thing as well. So it can automatically animate your trees, and that's what that plugin I created uh, is good for. You see what I mean? If I turn the wind on here, it can create animated animated trees for you, and you can take that animated tree into Eon View and um, it will animate if you're, if you're doing an animation with your camera. You can knock back how strong that wind is as well in Speed Tree. Um, I'm just going to turn the uh, wind off. But uh, if you wanted an animated plant, you could export it from Speed Tree, use my plugin that I created for Max, and convert it to a plant that you could use in Eon View. We're not going to be doing that because we're not doing an animation. I'm going to export the mesh. I'm going to find a good spot to put it. I'm going to call this one tree. Now I'm going to uh, export it as an FBX. So I'm just going to call it Garden Terrace Left Tree. You can export, the program allows you to export an OBJ, uh, C4D, 3DM. A few different formats, but FBX should be good enough for what we want. It should pop up another dialog box. Yep. Now I want it to export everything, so branches, caps, fronds, facing leaves, non-facing leaves, uh, zones and forces, that's more to do with the wind. Um, now this is include here, this is where you would select wind if you wanted to export an animated plant. We're not exporting an animated plant, so I'm just going to leave it on none. Uh, and if you do export the wind, you can set the length of um, the animation here that's happening on the tree. But like I said, we're not animating this plant, so I'm just going to uh, leave it as none there. If you were using my plugin, though, you'd change that to wind. 
and then you uh, decide how long you want the animation to play for, whether it's 30 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever. The pre-roll is how long it, uh, the, the, the tree will sit before it starts moving in the wind. Again though, if you look at the tutorial I created for that plugin, it, it, it goes into a bit more detail about this for you. Um, I'm not going to use a custom preset. They have ones for Macs, so if you wanted to uh, export it for Macs, you could probably choose 3D Studio Max. We'll leave it just as default. Uh, I'm not worrying about the units at all, because we can scale it in view. Uh, I'm, I'm creating separate alpha maps. I'm copying the textures as well into the folder that I'm saving the tree into. I'm just doing that for convenience, in case I want to change anything when I, when I import the model into view. We'll just go OK and wait for the program to uh, export our tree. So that's the tree for the left hand side. Let's get the tree for the right hand side. Which is this one here. Uh, and again, this is uh, a tree that I created specifically for, uh, shaped specifically to put in our scene. Well, I didn't want any tree leaves that um, hang out over the garden terrace, so I removed any branches that were hanging out on this side of the tree because this is the side that we'll be facing on the uh, right hand side. The garden terrace will be sitting in here. So let's export this tree. Uh, garden terrace right tree should be good. Uh, and again I can go, I can do a stream at some stage on using speed tree if you guys are interested in it. Like I said, um, a lot of the plants you see in the Unreal Engine use speed tree. They created using speed tree. So it may be something you guys are interested in. Alright. Because like, it is a good program. Uh, you can, I think you can take out a subscription to use the program. You don't have to buy it, but the subscription is, it used to be about $20 a month. I don't know whether they've changed that. But it does give you a lot of control over your own. Um, over your trees if you want to shape them to get them to look a certain way which is what I did I just uh, shaped it into the shape that I wanted to use for my uh, my render for my garden terrace and that's and exported the tree as a static object let's uh, close down the tree now that we've exported our plants I, I don't want to save changes no no now, viewers complaining about memory because we had speed tree open and speed tree likes to grab some memory too, so just click OK to get rid of that. Um, let's do a save though. I, I know it's going to take five minutes, guys, but um, I don't want to risk importing those trees until we've saved out this file, so thank you, Smurfberry. I should have opened up the uh, render before. I started saving the file, the preview quality render that we're using. So we're going to be saving out this file because I, like I said, I don't want to risk the program crashing before when I start importing those really high resolution trees into the scene. Um, so we're going to wait for it to save out. It'll, it'll take about five minutes to save out. Uh, Sniper Echo is asking, can you define custom LODs for export in Speedtree? Yes, you can. You certainly can. You can um, get Speedtree to generate the LODs for you based on whatever parameters you set. And it will save out the LODs as it saves out the tree. I didn't worry about it for this scene because, again, we're not uh, animating anything. We're not going to be pulling back or close to the camera. We're not going to be moving the camera, so... There's no need for LODs, but uh, it certainly, it definitely has LOD support built into the program. Uh, again, that's why Epic Games chose Speedtree for their uh, Unreal Engine, because it uh, has a lot of things built into it that make game development really easy if you're creating trees or grass or bushes, all that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a good program. And it, if it, you know, Epic Games wouldn't have included it in their uh, Unreal Engine if they didn't think it was good. And it is good. Been, the company's been around for donkey's years, Speedtree. A lot of um, games use it 
You remember, um, I don't know about the new Skyrim game. I know Oblivion, they use speed tree. Uh, that's Bethesda. To do all of the trees in Oblivion. They probably would have used it for uh, Skyrim as well. I don't know for sure, but I know that they used it in Oblivion. The company's been around forever and um, they specialise in doing trees for games engines. So. And also for cinematic work, which is uh, the program that you just saw me use. But both programs look the same. One saves trees for cinematics, so really high polygon trees. Uh, speed tree for UE4 saves lower polygon trees for a game engine. This tree that you saw me, that I uh, just exported from speed tree is too high poly to take into a game engine. So you wouldn't, uh, you'd have to reduce it to use it in a game engine. You'd use the other version of the software for UE4, speed tree for UE4. $19 a month, yeah. I thought it was about $20 a month. That's the UE version, UE4 version, yeah. So you guys are doing is unreal to do game, uh, to create games or whatever. Speed Tree, Sniper Echoes just said it's $19 a month to take out a subscription that allows you to uh, download the software and use it and create plants for your games uh, so that you can bring into the Unreal Engine. So for what it does, it's, it's not bad. It's a pretty, and like I said, the program is excellent. I, I prefer it over Eon Views Plant Factory. Um, the advantage with Eon View's Plant Factory is it's created by Eon, the same people that make View here. So you won't have to uh, muck around with your materials if you're exporting trees or plants. They, the two programs integrate very well, but Speed Tree is a better program in my opinion. Smurfberry uh, Barbecue says, man, I'd love to get some Speed Tree and then put in custom alien plants. Custom alien plant parts. Modular freaky plants. You could, again, you can, uh, in Speed Tree, you can import objects that you can then incorporate into whatever it is that you're uh, growing. So it's certainly uh, doable, that's for sure. It's just a question of creating whatever freaky, freaky dicky plant piece you want, importing it into Speed Tree and then uh, adding that to the node and getting it to grow as part of whatever it is you're growing. But Speed Tree truly is it's a great program. If you're doing trees, you're doing flowers, you're doing shrubs, uh, and you want to make them you'll look unique, you want something specific, uh, it's definitely the program I would recommend over uh, Plant Factory, which is made by Elon. Not that Plant Factory is anything wrong with Plant Factory. It's a good program, but Feature is better. In my opinion. Uh, but as far as rendering environments go, Eon View here is, is the only one that I would recommend. Which is the only one that's really available on the market. So. I know that there's TerraGen. That's the one I was trying to think of um, the other day. There is one other environment creation and rendering program called uh, TerraGen. TerraGen 4, I think it is. I think it's PlanetSide is the company. Uh, but that's more difficult to use than Vue, and it, uh, I still prefer to use Vue. I think Vue is the best on the market. So there's only those two. There's Eon Vue and TerraGen. World Machine creates um, mountains and things, but it doesn't do vegetation. So if you want to create a 3D environment like we are and render it out, Eon View is really the only way to go. Uh, like I said, uh, TerraGen, a company called PlanetSide, I think, make a, a program called TerraGen, which is like View, more difficult to use, and uh, I don't think it's quite as good as View. Or World Machine, which will create uh, mountains and things for you but it doesn't do vegetation most people will use world machine in combination with eon view they'll save out a, uh, a height map from world machine and bring that into eon view to create their mountains anyway that's the render that we've been working on smoke area we started with our model we added our hills and we added our plants in the background then we added our flowers on either side of the hill to draw our eye to the uh, terrace. Then we scattered leaves along the path and up the stairs. Then we added uh, terrains on either side that we're going to put our hero trees on. And then we put some moss on those trees. Now I haven't rendered out the smaller moss yet, so like I said, that moss is a little bit big. We did reduce the size, but we'd have to render it out again to uh, see. We've um, saved our file out. 
We've exported our trees from Speedtree, so uh, I think we may call it a day there, guys. What we will be doing tomorrow is I'll be importing those trees that we just saved from Speedtree, those two hero trees. I'll be importing them into the image here and we'll be placing them uh, either side of our garden terrace. Uh, no, there probably won't be cloud smoke berry barbecue because I'm thinking about putting this in a uh, in like a uh, forest. I wanted to go for more of a uh, an overgrown, neglected type um, scene. So uh, I don't think I'll put clouds in the background. The background is going to change completely. Like I said, you guys, when when we're finished rendering up the foreground here, and I put the backgrounds in, it's really going to change the image quite dramatically. And you'll see what I mean when I do it. But there won't there won't be any uh, any clouds. There won't, probably won't even be any sky in the image because I'm going to be putting it in a forested environment. I want this uh, garden terrace to look like um, something that's in this little clearing in, in a forest that you sort of come across, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not sitting in someone's backyard or in a garden, it's, it's just this thing that's been neglected and it's in this clearing in a forest. That's the look I'm going for. Um, so when I put the background in, it'll change the look of the image quite dramatically. It's surprising how much it can change the look of the image. But again, we'll be doing that at the very end once we've got uh, finished setting up our trees here in the foreground and putting in some probably some flowers through the foreground here. So tomorrow uh, I'll be back on again at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. Um, we will pull in, import those trees we exported from Speed Tree for either side of the path here, uh, and uh, look at putting some flowers in the foreground. I want to thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching and you guys that popped into chat, uh, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, enjoy talk, chatting to you guys in chat. Um, thank you guys, everyone that's been watching for hanging out and watching. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you consoles for uh, following me on my Twitch channel. I do appreciate that as well. Remember guys, if you're not sure when I'm going to be live, um, I do always post 15 minutes before I'm about to go live to my Twitter page at Phil Does 3D, but my schedule doesn't change. I always uh, stream on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. So you're quite welcome. Thank you, uh, thank you for hanging out with me, Sniper Rickham, for being here, and thank you all you guys as well for hanging out and watching. Uh, like I said, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys then. Take care, guys.